All right, quick tip tutorial time. Um, this time it's going to be on quick wood creation, and I'm going to show you three different ways to create wood. Okay, so here we have the first one. Okay, so really quickly, really, really quick. Uh, here we've got the second one, a little bit more details, a little bit more time to do. And of course, we've got the third one, which of course contains the most detail and will take the most time. So yeah, I just have a piece of geometry here, okay? And then all I did was I subdivided a few times, so I got to around 800,000 polygons. You can use Dynamesh if you want. So basically, you know, we just have that. And what I'm going to be using is the Dam Standard and then BTD for the Trim Dynamic. Okay, those are the brushes I'm going to be using mainly, and maybe a little bit of a clay build-up and the Smooth Brush, okay, which is just Shift. Okay, so those are pretty much the brushes we're going to be using. So let's go to the Trim Dynamic, okay, and let's first hold down Spacebar and get that intensity down just a little bit because it's a bit intense there. So I just want to kind of create these edges on the wooden piece. And you can see I also have Symmetry off. So um, that'll come in later and you'll see why. There's no need for Symmetry at this point. So I'm just going to leave that off. And also under Stroke and Modifiers, you'll see there's something called Replay Last, Shortcut 1 on the keyboard. I'm going to be using that quite a few times. Not now, but just a little bit later. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward through this and what I have here is just, you know, a little bit of dents and scratches and just a little bit of wear on this piece of wood. Next, we're going to go to the damn standard, okay, which is BDS, I think. And we're just going to create some lines here. And this is the reference I'm kind of using, okay. So we just have that. And it doesn't have to be exact, right? As long as you kind of know what wood looks like, you'll be fine. And so the, remember, this is the second one we're creating, okay, um, which is, just takes a little bit more time. So I'm just going to bring that stroke out and I'm going to press 1 a few times. And the thing when you're repeating strokes, and that was that replay last that I showed you under stroke, after you do the stroke like I'm doing here, right, it's just one continuous stroke, okay, and then you press 1. Okay, don't click and drag and then move the camera, because if you do that, it won't work. So again, just detailing this, okay, and then including the knots on the wood here as well. Just making sure we have that, and... Next, what I want to do is hold on spacebar and go to these dots. Okay, I just want to click on the dots and then make sure we have spray. Okay, so that's not the default, but we're just changing that up. And then we're going to go to Alpha and then change the modifier. Okay, so this is the default Alpha, and I want to change the H tiles all the way up to about 5 or 7. Okay, and again, we're still using Dam Standard, and this is the effect you get. So what I'm going to do here is just add a little bit, uh, bring that intensity down first, holding down Spacebar, and then we just want to create a little bit of, uh, a little bit of texture on this wood. Okay, so... You don't have to worry about it because it looks pretty harsh right now, but we're going to fix that. So you can go pretty deep with it and it won't really, it won't show through, okay? So we can just kind of go with the grain of the wood here and then we can create a little bit of a smaller brush and then just kind of create areas here we want just a little bit more sort of um, texture on it. Okay, and then maybe here we'll go against the grain, right? Because sometimes you have that in wood, like just with the way it was cut, okay? Again, no symmetry, right? We're just doing it on one side. And then we're going to go to BTD and finally use our Trim Dynamic. Make the brush size a little bit bigger, okay? And then just one stroke, right? Just go right across. And as you can see, there we have it, right? That's the wood. Now, I don't really like this technique with the Trim Dynamic, okay? So, uh, because it's just one sort of piece here. And if you want a little bit of wear and tear, it's a little too flat for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to create a little bit of a smaller brush here, uh, reduce the size, and I'm just going to do it individually, right? So this takes a little bit more time. So it depends on what you want to do, obviously. Uh, but here I do want a little bit more sort of control so that way I can just have so maybe some areas a little bit more detailed so I'm not using the trim dynamic too harsh on that and then some areas you know I'm just going pretty flat with the trim dynamic so that this just gives you a little bit more control so it depends on what you want okay and so on the edge here I'm just going to mask it off okay so holding down control with the mask pen Oh, and actually, with, uh, before I do that, I just want to go to Damn Standard and make sure we reset everything. So under Alpha, I've got the H tiles and bring that back. And then if you hold Spacebar and go to Dots, make sure you select Freehand instead, okay? And that way, you've, you've just got the normal brush. And over here, I'm just um, customizing these sides. And then going back to the Trim Dynamic and then just uh, kind of creating what I would think the end would look like, right? And then here, we're just masking that off and then moving that with a gizmo. Okay, the gizmo is W. And again, just creating a piece there on the edge. Okay, and here what I'm going to do is, before we do that, actually, I'm going to go down to uh, masking, or morph target rather. I'm going to store the morph target. I have a shortcut for that, okay? And I have this on my custom uh, UI if you want to download that. It's in the description below. But what I do want to do is use the damn standard here, and I want to use that in conjunction with the morph brush, okay? Which is B. BMG, I think, yeah, BM. And here it is on this side here, so the morph brush. 
Okay, and I, and I can just morph this out, right? So if I want to just sort of experiment with just different ways of doing that. And of course, I'm just using the normal damn standard here, and I'm just going to go into these grooves. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea, right? And I'm just going to mirror and wild that. And the mirror and wild is on a... Well, I'll show you guys later. Well, don't worry too much about that. And of course, on the edges here, I'm just doing the same sort of technique, right? Just using a little bit of clay build up, using the damn standard, and then using the trim dynamic, okay? That's all it is. Nothing too crazy there. And for the simpler one, right, this is the first one now, all I'm doing is using the H tiles and then using the, the spray, okay? Basically the same technique and then just going through with the trim dynamic. And this is the quickest way you can create wood, right? As you can see though, it has no individuality and it's, it's not too special, right? But if you just wanna create something really quickly, this is the best way to do it, okay? So that's the first way. I showed you the second way first and then the, the first way second. And now for the third way, which is the most complicated, I'm gonna go to import, right, texture, import, um, select the wooden texture and then click add to spotlight and I'm just going to scale this down so I just got one of the references from the net what you want to make sure that it's got a lot of dark grooves right because otherwise it won't work too well so I'm just going to scale that and I'm just going to zoom in here on my mesh and I'm going to use the clay build up brush for this actually and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw right on this brush to right on the picture so it basically traces the picture onto your mesh okay Again, you want a high mesh, a high poly mesh around 800,000 polygons is what I have. And as you can see, we've got the pattern here, right? So this is, we don't have to try and use damn standard and try and copy this, right? It's already there. What I'm going to do next is I am just going to use the smooth brush, right? And I'm just going to smooth this out. You can keep it like this, but I think it's a little too sharp. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. And then with the same technique we've been using, I'm going to go back to the trim dynamic, which is BTD again, and then just trim this back down, okay? And as you can see, we've got that same... Uh, sort of technique that we've been using but a different look okay it looks a lot, a lot more realistic because we've used an actual uh, picture of wood right and that's all we're doing here so uh, the same concept the same technique after you use the picture and again going in with the damn standard it depends how detailed you want to get or how much time you want to spend on this so you can go in there and go pretty nuts and spend an hour on this piece and really just you know bump it up and again I'm doing the same thing here just masking that off and pulling that out and this time I'm using Dynamesh and I'll show you where that is a little bit later on as well. And I'm just, just using the Dynamash here and then the damn standard as well, okay? So just trying to create those details there. I'm being very quick here, obviously you want to be a little bit more deliberate. And again, bring out those H tiles with the damn standard and we can just create a little bit more texture here. And then BTD for the trim dynamic and then we can just trim that back down just to give a little bit more detail there. And this is with Dynamesh, by the way. It's under the Geometry and then Dynamesh. Okay, so that's what that is. And under Geometry and Modify Topology is where you will find Mirror. And then Mirror and Wild is under Deformation. Okay, and that's where you'll find those two. So Modify Topology, Geometry, Modify Topology, and then um, Deformation. Okay, so what you want to do next is I'm going to show you guys how to color this. So I'm going to hold down Spacebar, click on my Madcap Gray, and then select Skin Shade 4. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to create this, just how to color the wood like this, okay? So we're pretty much done with the tutorial, but if you just want to see how to color it, this is how I'm going to do it. And hold on spacebar, select the brown, that's a pretty good one. And next we're going to use BPA. So BPA is your paintbrush. You can use any brush to paint, but I just like to use a paintbrush. And we want to make sure that RGB is on, and RGB intensity is what we're going to be using. So RGB and RGB intensity, those are the two key pieces for this. So what I'm going to do is click on Full Object, which is under Color, and then Full Object. This will fill the entire thing. Okay, so now we have that one brown. I'm going to try and use like three colors here, right? Keep it pretty simple, because this is a simple piece, so we don't want to go too nuts. So I'm going to go, hold on Spacebar, and then choose a darker color, right? So we're going to go down here to Masking. I'm going to Mask by Cavity, and then hit that Mask by Cavity. Okay, now that's going to mask this, and I'm going to Control click outside of this so it inverts it. Right, and I'm going to go to RGB intensity and bring that down to about 15, 20, around about there. And then I'm going to go to full object and hit that a few times. Okay, so remember I've got a shortcut that's under color, full object. And now it has the dark areas that are filled in, or rather the cavities that are filled in with dark. And then for the third color, we're going to go light. And this will be for like the areas that are, you know, just worn out, right? So over time, you know, the wood gets a little bit lighter because of rain and uh, the sun, right? So just on the edges, I'm just going to use that light color. 
right? Bring up an in intensity maybe, holding down spacebar with the RGB intensity, not the intensity, right? RGB intensity and intensity are two different things, right? RGB deals with color and intensity just deals with actual brush stroke, okay? And I'm masking it here and just kind of experimenting with colors. Again, take your time, <laughs> right? I'm just speeding it up for the sake of uh, the video. And on this piece as well, I did the, I used the exact same technique. And then for the white, I went a little bit crazy there, you can see. And I just sort of detailed the areas there. And for this knot on the wood, what I used was a darker color. And I just went over the whole thing, right? So there's no need for you to go and be too crazy with it, right? So, and you can see the result is pretty good. And next for the third one, uh, we have pretty much the same thing here, right? But let's say you have this wood and you're like, you know, I really like that light color there. How do I get that? Well, you can just bring it up. And then while you have with Shift Z, right? Um, and then while you hover over it, you can press C for color and you can select it and then press full object So it'll actually select the color for you from the picture if you press C on the picture and There I just went, went uh, used my RGB intensity all the way up to 100 Which is white filled it with white because it wasn't 14 and yeah again Just doing the same thing that I did with all the other ones just masking it and then filling it right and just experimenting here and Yeah, that's pretty much it and I created another one as well, which was so we have, where, here it is, okay, right. So over here, instead of using the trim dynamic, I just sort of left it, right, with that piece of wood. So instead of using trim dynamic, I just left it and I just used the damn standard and the other pieces, which is why it looks a little bit different. So that's another way of doing it. Instead of using the damn standard or the trim dynamic, rather, you can just leave it as you trace it and then smooth it out and you'll get pretty much this result. And that is actually it, guys. So I've shown you three different methods, some pretty cool techniques there, and depending on what you want, Honestly, the third one is kind of unnecessary unless you're doing like hyper detail, realistic stuff and people are looking at that wood like it's part of your your character's main armor or something. Then yeah, maybe you want to use the third technique, but this the first and second one are probably the best and th those are the ones I'll use for the most for the most part unless I'm 3D printing something and I really want it to look kind of kind of special, right? But yeah, I think you don't have to put that much effort for the third one. There's no need for that one unless you want to go OCD crazy on it. I yeah, hope you guys found this helpful and uh, like it if you liked, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments section. And yeah, I see that you guys like these videos where I help you speed up production on certain things so like with metal and with wood in this case. So yeah, I'm going to try and do more videos like that. Um, but I, can't, I don't always have like the best tips on everything. So we'll see what those videos will do. And I think up next I'll do live bullions. I don't know, we'll have a look at that. So I will see you guys in the next one.